Welcome to the second year six quiz. If you haven't seen the first one, go back to Mrs. Osh Tutors on YouTube and find it. There are two rounds of eight questions and all the answers are fully explained at the end. So you can learn as you go. Play on your own, play with your family, play in, in school. There'll be a brief pause after each question. If you would like longer, then just press pause. So grab a pencil and paper, let's get started. Question one. 36 times 25 is equal to what times 50? Question two, practice and practice. Write a sentence using each of these words correctly. Notice that they're spelt slightly differently. Question three, do you know what this flower is called? Question four, what is 7,083 divided by 1,000? Question five, do you know which country has this flag? Question six, the perimeter of the larger triangle is 72 centimeters. And you can see that there are some smaller triangles within it. What would be the perimeter of one of those smaller triangles? So the perimeter of the large triangle is 72 centimetres. You're trying to work out what the perimeter of one of the smaller triangles would be. Question seven. Which of these three words is an antonym for deteriorate? Improve, perceive, resilient. Final question of the first round. James hurried out of the house without his usual morning coffee, grabbed his keys with a frustrated sigh and drove off, glancing at the clock on his dashboard repeatedly. The question is, based on James's actions, what can you infer about his morning and what might have caused his frustration? Okay, if you need to go back and look at any of those questions again, please do, but the answers are now coming up. Question one. You could have worked this out the long way by calculating 36 times 25, finding the answer, and then dividing that by 50, but there's a shortcut. Because if you notice that 50 is exactly double 25, then you would need to halve 36 to make 18. Because if one of the numbers is twice as big, the other number needs to be half as big. So that would be a little shortcut. Question two. Here's a couple of examples. I practice the piano every day or I have piano practice every day. So the sentences are saying something similar, but in the first sentence, with practice spelt with an S, practice has been used as a verb. Whereas in the second sentence, when practice has been spelt with a C, it's been used as a noun. Now, if anyone's watching from America, you use these two letters the other way around, which is very confusing for everybody. But in England, S for the verb, C for the noun. Question three, this is a tulip or a bunch of tulips. Did you know tulips were once so valuable in the 17th century that one single bulb could cost the same amount as a house? So we wanted to think of using a place value chart. Some children will have fell into the trap of trying to use a long or short division method, but it's simpler than that. Think of it in a place value chart. We know the number is getting smaller because it's being divided. There are three zeros in 1000, so we're going to move the number three places along in the place value chart. When we do that, our answer is 7.083. Question five, this is the Canadian flag. The red and white actually represent part of the nature in Canada. So the red represents red maple leaves, and you can see a red maple leaf on the flag too. And the white shows the snow-covered landscapes. 
question six, so the perimeter of the larger triangle, well, a triangle has three sides. So our first step was to use the perimeter, so the distance all the way around the larger triangle and divide it by three, which is 12. So that tells us how long one of those long sides of the, um, what, sorry, divide it by six, and that shows us how long one of the sides of the shorter triangles would be, the smaller triangles because we can see that there are, on each side of the large triangle, there are two sides of a small triangle. Once we know what the one side of a short, smaller triangle is, 12 centimetres, then we can use that, multiply it by three, to work out that the perimeter of one of the smaller triangles is 36 centimetres. Question seven, deteriorate means to worsen. So the opposite of that would be to improve. Perceive means to sense something. And if you're resilient, you're strong in handling difficult situations. Question eight, let's read the text again. James hurried out of the house without his usual morning coffee, grabbed his keys with a frustrated sigh and drove off, glancing at the clock on his dashboard repeatedly. I've written a modeled answer. Um, you may have written it slightly differently, but see if you've got the same level of explanation uh, for whatever it is you say. So James's rushed actions and frustration suggest he was running late, likely for work or an appointment. Skipping his usual coffee and frequently checking the clock indicate he was worried about the time, possibly due to oversleeping or an unexpected delay. So my the beginning of my answer is a statement answering the question and then I have included some evidence such as skipping his coffee and checking the clock and then some explanation as to why I think that has happened. Time to add up your scores, compare them if you're playing them with someone else for round one and then we are going to move on to round two. Question one. The paintbrushes belonging to the artists can you rewrite this phrase using an apostrophe to show possession? Question two. Here we have a cuboid. It has a length of 1.4 meters, a height of 10 centimeters, and a width of 0.08 meters. Can you work out its volume? Question three, which country has a capital city of Beijing and on which continent is that country located? Question four, the blue angle measures 36 degrees. What is the size of the green angle? Question five, do you know what this symbol represents? What is this symbol called? Question six, a bit of fun. So the longest living cat and dog. I would like you to try to have a guess. Which do you think lived to 38 years, the cat or the dog? Which lived to 29 and a half years? Which of them was called Bluey? And which of them was called Cream Puff? Question seven. I describe a verb or an adjective. What am I? Finally, question eight. Would you rather have 18% of 50 pounds or 50% of 18 pounds? Okay, that's the end of the last round. The answers are coming up. Question one. Hopefully you spotted that there was more than one artist. So therefore the apostrophe for possession needs to go after the S. If you put an apostrophe before the S in artists, then you would be saying there was only one artist that had paintbrushes. Question two, volume, to calculate it, we need to multiply width by height by length. 
rather cheekily in this question, I had some mixed units of measurement. So you first needed to decide whether you were going to calculate in metres and then convert them all to metres, or whether you were going to convert them all into centimetres. I've done it both ways. So whichever way you calculated it, hopefully you can find your answer. The first worked calculation is if I had converted everything into centimetres. And the second is if I had converted everything into metres. I hope you also remembered the units at the end. It would be centimetres cubed or metres cubed. Question three. This was the capital city of China, still is, sorry, and it's found in Asia. You may not know this, but ice cream and toilet paper were first invented in China. Question four. The degrees along a straight line add up to 180. So we simply needed to subtract 36 from that to have an answer of 144 degrees. This is a semiquaver, which is a quarter of a beat in music. Here we go. So the longest living cat was called Cream Puff and lived to be 38. And the longest living dog was called Bluey and lived to be almost 30 years old. So an adverb can describe either a verb or an adjective. So, for example, if I had the sentence, the mouse was very quiet, quiet is the adjective being used to describe the mouse, very is describing the word quiet, so very would be the adverb. Alternatively, if I had the sentence, the mouse quietly moved, well, this time quietly is the adverb because it's describing the verb moved. Final question. So they're actually the same. So let me prove it to you before letting you in on a little trick that you may not know. So firstly, calculating 18% of 50, I've used my knowledge of 10%, which is therefore five pounds. I've halved the 10% so that I can find 5%, which is then two pounds 50, two and a half. And I have divided 50 by 100 to find 1%, which is 0.5. I've then used those building blocks to work out 18%. So I need one of the 10%, one of the 5%, and three of the 1% to add up to 18. 10% plus 5% plus three lots of 1% is 18%. So therefore, I need to add five plus two and a half, and then three lots of 0.5, which is equal to nine. To find 50% of a number, I just halve it. So half of 18 is also nine. Now this works for every percentage that you care to work out. So if you find in an exam or a test, you've been asked to find something as tricky as 18% of 50, just switch the numbers around and find 50% of 18 instead. The answer will be the same and it will be a lot less work, which means a lot less likely to make a mistake. OK, add up your scores, compare it with anyone you were playing with. Maybe take some tips of topics that you might like to revise afterwards. I hope you enjoyed this quiz. If you did, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel and share it with some friends.